A few months back, you may remember me playing with uh, the stepper motors and these neat little uh, stepper motor drivers, the uh, HR4988 drivers. And uh, in that video, uh, and a previous video, somebody pointed out to me that this is actually the same motor <coughs> that you can find in a DVD drive. There's one right there. So that set me off to thinking, where else can a person get stepper motors for cheap or for free? That's what we're doing today, mining for motors. So I've assembled an assortment of old electronics that I had lying around here that probably have stepper motors in them. Oh, that's not going to make for much of a video. I'll have to do that one on the other workbench. Anyway. I think we should dig through some of these old things and just see what we can find in them for stepper motors to add to my collection. First off, we'll start with the obvious one that we already know is in this DVD drive. And I'm going to probably need a cup to stash all the screws in. There we go. Just because you never throw away screws. Well, at least I never do. Because you never know when they're going to be useful. Okay, so there's another one of that exact same one, except for it's got a bit of lithium grease on it. And I also ripped the uh, flat flex connector, meeting connector, off the board. I'm sure that was intentional. Because that way I can actually use this thing. So there's the first one. Let's see if there's any others in this guy. Oh, that's interesting. It just clamped the disc against this little floaty thing in the lid. It didn't even have a proper clamp on it. Okay. Okay, so that's a DC motor. I don't care about that one. The spindle motor. I can feel cogging around it though. How the hell did I get that off? Okay. Oh, and there's a neat little switch in there too. Is that a switch? It is a little switch. Okay, there it is. It operates that way. That's cool. Yeah, I can feel this thing cogging. And it's got... What's it got for pins? Two, three, four, five. That says stepper motor to me. I don't know how useful that one will be. Oh, does it? Aha! It's got a little mag disc magnet on there too. That's cool. Okay. So that's a stepper motor. Um, I'll get that. Oops. Parts falling on the floor. Don't care. I'll get that little DC motor out of there. Somehow. At another time. That's not my target today. Oh, but I do need the flat flex connector that meets with that head. That's that one. That's for shits and giggles. I'm going to try and use my hot air, which I've never actually used for desoldering yet. And turn it up to about 360. And get it going in there. And I'm not quite sure. Zoom down a little bit. I think I'm just going to use this little 
Who am I going to melt the plastic though? Maybe I should think about this a little bit. I think I just need to soften it, soften the solder, and then get under it with a screwdriver. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Would you look at that? Except for now I've deformed my workbench. That's interesting. Okay, that worked. Ow, ow. That's hot. Cool. For our next victim, let's check out this old iOmega Zip 100. Yes, that is a 100 meg zip disk. Um, back before CDs were common or affordable, this was, seemed to be a reasonable way to move data around and back up data and stuff. How am I going to get into that? Why am I doing that? I have a spudger. Yeah, that's just... That's surprising, but it works, so we'll go with it. Well, is there a screw underneath there? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Hmm. There we go. I don't have any zip discs left. Um, at least I don't think I do. They perished long, long ago. But they looked like an uh, oversized three and a half inch floppy, basically. And they just slid into this tray. And what do we got down there? And then you connect it up to the parallel port, the parallel printer port of your computer, and pass through to your actual printer. And they would, uh, and yeah, you could you'd throw an entire 100 meg of data on. Uh, wow. Custom Chips iOmega, which is the brand of this thing. Um, the major chip is that. What's under this barcode here? What kind of Chinese secrets? Okay, that is an Adaptec uh, chip. Um, this one is presumably some kind of ROM. Um, power plug, big capacitor, a little tact switch. How is this held in there? Oh, come on. Is that going to come out? Oh. Like that. Oh, there is one screw of the oddball variety in there. That doesn't really matter. Uh, well, that's not what I'm looking for anyway. I keep getting sidetracked. This is interesting. Because I haven't been inside one of these before. There's a little spring loaded thing. Oh, that looks like. This little spring loaded thing on the back, and that looks like a solenoid in there. Um, but this turntable can feel very much like it's cogging all the way around, like a stepper motor would. And that has four, oh, you can see it there. It has four pins on it. So I'm going to guess that, that too is a stepper motor. Okay, and they're on this little, oh, that's cool, a spring return, yeah. So this is just a little linear motor of some description that runs that forward and back. Um, I don't even know how it's controlled, but it's, it's no doubt 
this magnet down in here somewhere, a permanent magnet, and then this electromagnet around here, get charged enough to repulse it or, or send it along there. Okay, and yeah, I'll, I'll grab the connector for that later. I don't need it right now. Next up, we have just a standard old floppy drive. Uh, a three and a half inch floppy drive. Um, another piece of chassis. <gasps> That looks familiar, doesn't it? There we go. I think we have another stepper motor that moves that head back and forth. Okay. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to unsolder it. Turn the iron on, wait for it to warm up. Ooh, that's adhesive down. That's disturbing. And I hope I haven't done any damage, but... You know what, this probably would have been easier. Yeah, I'm going to use the hot air again. So another thing, I'm not used to using hot air. I'm not used to thinking of using hot air for soldering. But it works. It works so very well. Especially for desoldering these weird little surface mount thingies. There we go. Another, another uh, stepper motor. Almost identical to that one. Actually, it's a little bit girthier. Um, with a shorter lead screw on it. So there we go. Uh, what else we got in here? I wonder what the turntable motor is on this thing. Because that's another place where we found stepper motors before. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay, that may in fact be a stepper motor, but it's... Oh, it's the guts of a stepper motor. Oh, cool. Okay. So around this ring, we have a bunch of magnets. You can see, you can see them physically in, among, in between those cogs. And let me get an actual magnet. So that sticks there. It doesn't want to stick to that one so you can see that they're alternating polarities it's happy sticking there not to that one but it is happy sticking to that one so these alternate polarities all the way around um, and then inside the motor we have a bunch of electromagnets that can be controlled by I'm gonna guess this guy here um, it to go on and off in either north or south polarity and attract or repel this guy and then underneath well okay so the other thing we got is this little inductor over here with its pole piece sticking out and its pole piece sticks out right at this little nub in here which is one of the magnets um, and the rest of them are kind of shielded behind this can so that is a tachometer and the rest of this these little tracks around here i'm guessing they're going to be either speed or position sensing going back towards here actually probably position sensing because you've got a magnet moving past what's sort of a coil of wire a little printed trace on the board there and i see their tracks heading off Oh, everything goes back to this guy, doesn't it? Of course, obviously. Um, so, yeah. So, it is a stepper motor. But it's not one that we're going to be able to salvage reasonably. As cool as it is. 
it needs this and it needs all this other circuitry to do its magic so next victim an old IBM desk star hard drive from November of 2002 by the looks of it Obviously, this is going to be destructive tear down the are. That is thick and heavy. Wow, that's very heavy. And in here we have the platters, nice mirror finish platters. And with the platters, you can see my lighting. Okay, let's start tearing into this. So this isn't a stepper motor. This is what's called a voice coil drive. It's actually very similar to that linear drive from the floppy, except for there's a big honking magnet right there and another one underneath. That's a four pin motor. That, oh, okay, that came out. So the spindle motor is a stepper. And yeah, I can feel it cogging a little bit. Okay. Now, how to get that out without completely destroying it? There is the platter. That's 40 gigs worth of data goodness. Never seen since it was put in in a uh, clean room back in, when did I say? O2, uh, something like that. That's neat. Hang that up on, a, on something on the back of my desk here, just because it's shiny. Mm. So... That's a voice call, so that's not going to be useful to me in my current quest. This looks like it's another one of those things. And, hmm, can I get that off without completely destroying it? So there is the pins protruding through. So I don't have to worry too much about whether or not I destroy this little flat flex. I just don't want to destroy the board that's or the uh, pins that are underneath it. Okay. Well, flat flexes are cool. So what do we got here? How tight can I go and focus? Focus. So. Got one, two, three, and four. Okay. So I've got that, but how do I get the whole thing out of there? That looks like it's press fed in. And I don't have a hydraulic press around here. Hmm. Okay, we found one. It's going to be a mechanical pain in the arse to get out. So, I'll just leave it there. But I won't throw it onto the pile of scrap on the ground. I'll just set it over there for now. Next victim. An old Canon uh, K1152 portable inkjet printer that has seen better days. Oh, I mean, it's, it's not failed or anything. It's just parallel port again, fairly obsolete and hard to get. Let's see if we can find some screws underneath 
here. If I was hiding a screw, that's where I would hide it. Nope, no screws under there. actually excellent so clearly that's a stepper motor how many wires is that two that's a five wire stepper motor okay there's this little clip thing here which is in my way there we go and it is another five wire stepper motor this one's, you can see it, maybe see it cogging when I'm turning it, I can feel it cogging. Is that the same part number of motor? No, it isn't. Okay, but regardless, um, but that meshes onto this little tooth belt here. That might be useful to have, actually. But that's another salvage for another time. Okay, possibly the oldest thing in my accumulation of old things that I'm tearing apart. A dot matrix printer. That I don't even know how old it is. But we'll get into her and see what we can find. I'm expecting to find probably two more steppers one for moving the head around on that same belt arrangement I'm actually the motors right there and the other thing that I that was easy the other thing that I'm expecting to find is another stepper motor that winds the paper forward but this thing is so ancient that it's actually got a more conventional power supply on it it doesn't have doesn't have a, well, it might have a switching power supply on it, but the first thing that we hit is a transformer. So that's going to make it uh, at least partially a linear power supply, which is nice and cool and old school and makes the old man me feel very happy. drives the head back and forth with the cog belt so that's heavy duty check out that son bit that's got some torque behind it wow uh, does it say exactly what it is yeah, it's got part numbers and stuff. I'll have to look that up. Cool. Hey, where's the other motor? There he is. Somebody was thinking. Oh. Oh, that is just sweet. So there's where it is in place. I undid the screw through the hole in the gear. And then to get this out, slide it through that slot and drop it out that hole because there's this piece of plastic behind it. That is sweet. These guys that designed this thing designed it for maintainability. Okay, so we got another five wire stepper motor. Not quite as big and beefy as that one, but that's gonna have some jam to it. And then there's all these mating gears up here that'll haul out later and some shafts and whatnot. Well, that was a fruitful evening of want and destruction. 
managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six uh, stepper motors that are fairly easy to repurpose. A couple more that are going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, to find a use for. And then there's this one in here, which I doubt that I'll be able to liberate, but we'll count it anyway. Plus a neat little solenoid and a whole bunch of other random stuff that I haven't even bothered to, to dig into yet. But for my stated goal of mining for servo motors, I think I'm going to call that a win. And that was just fun. Thanks for watching. If you have anything to say, uh, down in the comments as usual. And as always, I will talk to you later.